Welcome everyone, my name is Scott and welcome back to this tutorial series on building a space shooter game with Phaser 3. Previously we worked on updating our UI in our game and we added in new features for our score and player lives. If you missed the previous videos, there will be links in the video descriptions, the source code to this point, as well as complete source code for this video. There will also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up, so let's get started. Alright, so since we've wrapped up our player lives and our scoring mechanics, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to focus on adding in our game audio to our game. And so in our assets.json file, when we load in our assets, we're currently loading in a bunch of audio files that we're not using in our game. And so what we're going to do uh, in this video is we're going to go ahead and add a new audio manager. And what this is going to do is we're going to listen for various events in our game and we're going to go ahead and respond to those events and play different sounds. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add support for an explosion for like when one of our enemy ships are destroyed destroyed, when we fire our weapon, or even when we hit an enemy ship, and then we'll also go ahead and just add some nice background music that'll play while we're playing our game. And so for our audio manager, what we're going to end up doing is we're just going to go ahead and use our event bus component that we've been using for our other components. And we'll also add in some new custom events that we'll fire from like our weapon component and from our collider component. And so to go ahead and get started with all these changes, what we'll do is let's go ahead and start in our event bus component. And what we're going to do is we're going to add two new events so that we can track when we shoot our weapon and when we go ahead and hit an enemy ship. And so for these two events, we're going to go ahead and do ship hit and we'll do ship shoot. So for both of these, we'll keep with our pattern. We'll have our value be the same as our key for our object. And now what we need to do is we need to update our components to go ahead and emit these uh, when they happen. And so what we'll do is let's go ahead and jump into our weapon component. And so in our weapon component, let's come to the top of our class. We'll go ahead and add a new property to keep track of our event bus component. And then what we'll do is we'll add that to our constructor so we can provide it when we create an instance of our component. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and assign that. So we'll do our event bus component will equal to our event bus component that we provide. And then what we'll do is let's come down to our update method. And so when we fire our bullet and we play our animation, we'll go ahead and emit our new event. So we'll go ahead and use our event bus component. We'll use the emit method and let's do our custom events and we want to do ship shoot. So now for when our ship actually gets hit, we need to go ahead and update our collider component so we can go ahead and send out that event. So let's go ahead and jump over to that component and we'll also go ahead and add our event bus here. So what we'll do is I'm just going to copy this from our weapon component. We'll add that to our collider and we'll do the same thing for our constructor. And so we'll go ahead and change this to We'll go ahead and add that to our constructor. And so now what we want to do is when we collide with our enemy projectile, we'll want to go ahead and emit that event that we uh, just got hit. And so we'll go ahead and do our event bus component, emit. We'll do our custom events. And now we want to go ahead and do ship hit. All right, we'll just make sure our file extension is correct in both these files. All right, so now what we need to do is when we create instances of these components, we need to go ahead and pass our event bus through. So let's go ahead and start with our player. And so for our player, uh, we'll go ahead and go to our weapon component. Let's go ahead and add in our event bus. We'll go ahead and do this and we'll reference our event bus component and our collider component. Uh, we'll do the same thing. And now we want to go ahead and jump over to our enemy classes. Uh, so let's go ahead and start in our fighter class. So what we'll do is in our init method, when we go ahead and create our weapon component here, we'll go ahead and pass that in. And I'm just going to copy this. And we're also going to add that into our collider component. And now let's go ahead and jump over to our scout enemy class and we'll do the same thing. So we will go into our collider component. We'll add that in and we don't have a weapon component on this enemy. Uh, so we don't need to add that. All right. So now with our updates, now we need to go ahead and actually listen for these events and then we'll go ahead and play our sound. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we'll make a new class for our audio manager. Uh, so we'll do this under our source folder. Uh, what we'll do is we'll go into our objects and then for our objects, let's go ahead and add a new file. We're just going to call it audio manager. So what we'll do is let's go ahead and export our class. We'll export class, audio manager. And so for our class, we're going to get in our event bus component. So we'll have our event bus component. Let's add our constructor. And now for our argument, we're going to need our phaser scene. And then we'll also need our event bus component. And then what we'll do is we'll also store a reference to our phaser scene. And so we'll just add scene. So in our constructor, let's go ahead and assign those properties. So we have scene will be equal to our scene. Then we'll have our event bus component will be equal to our event bus component. So now in our constructor, we need to go ahead and listen for all those events that we're emitting and we'll go ahead and play our audio uh, files uh, when this happens. And so to get started, the first thing we'll do is let's go ahead and listen for our ship destroyed events. And so what we're going to go ahead and do is we'll do our event bus component. We'll do the on method. And now we need to go ahead and listen to our custom events. And we'll go ahead and start with enemy destroyed. 
And so when this event fires, we're going to go ahead and use our sound manager from our scene and we're going to go ahead and play our audio file we're going to play. So to do that, we're going to reference our scene that's associated with our audio manager. And now we want to use reference the sound manager. So we'll do dot sound. And now we need to go ahead and use the play method. And so for this method, we need to go ahead and provide our cache key where our audio file is stored. And so this is going to be explosion. And then we can also go ahead and provide any audio settings we want to apply to the sound effect when we play it. And so this allows us to do things like set the overall volume for when we play this. We can have our audio go ahead and repeat if it's like background music and different things like that. And so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and set volume and we're going to go ahead and set this to 0.6. And what volume does is we can provide a value between 0 and 1. And that's going to go ahead and allow us to modify the volume of the audio we're playing. And so if we have a default value of one, we're going to play it at the regular uh, level of whatever the audio file is. And we can, if it's a loud file, we can go ahead and scale it back by setting our volume to less than one. And it's going to go ahead and make that sound be a little more quiet. So what I'm going to go ahead and do real quick before we test is let's just copy this. And we'll also add in one for when our player is destroyed. So we go ahead and play the same sound. All right, so first to go be able to test, let's go ahead and jump into our game scene and we'll go ahead and create an instance of our audio manager. And so what we'll do is let's come down to the bottom of our create method. Let's do a new audio manager. Let's go ahead and pass in our scene and then our event bus component. And then we'll jump back to audio. Oh, need to fix our import. Let's go ahead and save. All right, so now if we have one of our ships get destroyed, we should be able to hear our sound effects. So we'll see when our enemies destroy, we play. And then when our player ship is destroyed, we also play an audio sound. All right, so now we can see that our sound's actually working from our audio manager. What we're going to go ahead and do next is we'll listen for our other events and we'll play our other audio effects. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to copy this line of code here, go ahead and paste it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to listen for one of our ships get hit by a bullet. And so we'll do ship hit. And then we're going to go ahead and play our hit audio sound. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to copy that, go ahead and paste it. And then we'll also do ship shoot. And we'll go ahead and do shot one for our audio asset. We'll go ahead and save. And so what we should be able to do now is we should be able to go ahead and test. So now we can hear when we shoot our bullets, we can hear our sound effect. And so we can see that's kind of loud. And so what we're going to do is we're going to bump this down even lower so it's not so loud for our game. So we're going to do 0 0.05. And so now we shoot, we'll see our sound has now been, it's a lot. So what we'll see now is when we fire our bullets, our sound is a lot lower compared to our other audio assets that we're playing. All right. And so the last thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and add some background music to our game. And so to go ahead and do this, what we'll do in our constructor is as soon as we create an instance of our audio manager, we'll go ahead and start playing our background music. And so to go ahead and do that, we're going to reference our scene and then we'll use the play method. And we're going to use the audio asset uh, BG. And then for our configuration, we're going to go ahead and set our volume to 0 0.6. And then one other thing we're going to do is we're going to set our loop property and we're going to go ahead and set this to be true. And so what loop does, it allows us to go ahead and loop this audio asset. So as soon as it finishes, it'll go ahead and repeat. Oh, and then our code, so not scene.play, uh, should be scene.sound.play. All right, as soon as our scene refreshes, we should now hear our background music playing uh, in our scene. All right, so those last changes for our game audio, that actually wraps up our tutorial series on creating a space shooter with Phaser 3. Uh, so in this series, uh, we covered a number of different topics and we focused on building reusable logic that we could put into components that we could add to our game objects. And we saw how we could use the phaser built in arcade uh, physics and other features to build this really cool game. And so I hope you really enjoyed the series. And so with the game that we created, it's a very basic game. What we could do now is you could take your game and you could actually take it further by adding new features and refining it and you can really make it your own. And so some ideas for how you could go ahead and enhance the game is you could add weapon power-ups. And so as we destroy enemies or reach certain scores, we could power up our weapons and that can make them stronger. So maybe you like shoot two bullets at a time or three uh, different bullet types like lasers. Uh, we could go ahead and add in support for mobile, so you can actually play it in on a mobile screen and have it be mobile responsive. We could add in new enemy types, and we could also add in like boss enemies that could have different attack patterns and be have like a health bar. Uh, for our spawners, we could change it so we actually spawn waves of enemies. So maybe like be a wave pattern where there's like three enemies in a row and different things like that. For the scoring mechanic, you could implement a high score feature, so we persist this between sessions, and we could show the high score when we get to our game over screen. We could then also then work on difficulty. So right now the game is very simple where we just have our enemies keep respawning. They don't actually get uh, any more difficult. 
So as long as we can dodge them, the game uh, difficulty stays the same. And then we can also add in other mechanics like a shield. And so uh, we pick up the shield, we'll be invulnerable for a period of time. Maybe when we spawn, we have a shield for a few seconds before it disappears. And then finally, we could actually refine the game by adding additional scenes. And so we could add like a title screen, we could add in like options, credits, and different things like that. Because there's lots of things we can do to improve this and then really take this game further. And so if you do decide to take this game further and add more features to it, I'd be definitely interested to know and in seeing what you build. And so if you do decide to extend this game and add more onto it, I'd definitely be interested in knowing and seeing what you build. Uh, so if you do, please let me know in the comments down below. All right, so with that, that actually brings this video to an end. Uh, so thank you again for watching this series. And as a reminder, there's a link in the description of this video to the complete source code for this video and for the full game project. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified uh, when my next video is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please send the links on your screen now.